about dropped out of, uh, of the kindergarten the around North so America, which been for being illiterate like how i don't know how on god's earth did she learn how to sew vance haynes who wrote an interesting paper oh, saying that pauline um, and hazel and Allie he was the one who noted that below this black map which is only two to three inches oh, thick okay. on most sites and crystal you Springs. found mm -hmm. evidence of the columbus culture really? you found their tool yeah. kits and their wow. their um spear points and so on you found um, evidence of the factory. state megafauna, mm -hmm. but not so above. Shirts, amongst you would other find things, this evidence of this yeah. cultural activity and sure, the megafauna like right up to the bottom of the. We had a neighbor. She worked. She worked. Black mat layers. We had a neighbor that worked above. from home making so wedding dresses and um, La Quinceañera dresses. Um, Sweet 16, you know, from home. And like she, some of their she, she, she even made those porcelain dolls and put them on like a china cabinet. They were expressive. They it, it, there was a small doll, portion of that, without the clothing, the without the clothing, the was like ninety dollars. And my dad was mad because one of my cousins that was living with us at the time. She, she bought a, a ninety dollar doll. My dad was mad. Right off the coast of California, here on the Santa you know, you know, man, aren't you? Oh, it was just massive no, I think she made. No, she made it when she was uh, cleaning the houses. And then this was preceded well, by the deposition of this black map layer. Right at the bottom of this black map layer. Yeah, because my dad looks at it like money, like you should grains, spend it wisely, spirals, right? Well, just because uh, it's the a waste of money to him doesn't mean it's a waste of money um, to her. Fullerines, yeah. you, you find and these women, impact proxies, and they're not all the same. Not all the age, they like dolls, you know what I'm saying? In fact, that's been one of the things that the critics have said. I understand. To me, it's a waste of money also. What they're doing is taking an oversimplified model and when you look at a comet fragmentation event, she was single. She didn't have no. Some of the things he spends money on is a waste of money to her. Compositions. And yeah, like what we he, he used to uh, get tickets to go to the ball game. I'm not convinced at you know? this point that it was necessarily just a, lot of a single impact of it. You know, you have to it take may a bus and everything. For five people, that's a lot of money. Several decades. Or to the it movies. May have then ceased for a while. And quite we a bit. It's probably more now. But there seems to be a second spasm at 11,600 years yeah. ago. It's also associated with a, a massive rise in sea level. They call, uh, there's two meltwater spikes, meltwater spike 1A and meltwater spike 1B. I'm quite convinced that these meltwater spikes that have been documented by marine geologists and oceanographers are correlated with these melting events of the ice sheet that I've been I'm looking at in terms of their, their geomorphic uh, um, consequences. Because some of these events, I mean, the only way I can describe some of these meltwater events is that you, the only modern analog to this would be a tsunami. And we've seen some pretty devastating tsunamis within the last decade or two, um, both in Indonesia and in Japan. And I don't know if you've ever seen any of like the videos of these tsunamis. Anybody listening, it is definitely worthwhile to go online and look at some of these videos where you can actually see the, the, the unbelievably powerful effects of a, of a 30 or 40 or 50 foot tsunami, right? Now, some of the landscapes, and I have a, um, some images we can pull up here shortly, um, are places in Montana, in trouble. Uh, Idaho, Washington, mm -hmm. where you literally had a tsunami sweeping over the land that was over a thousand feet deep. And that tsunami came off the ice cool. cap. That's, that's, that's not an oceanic tsunami. That's right. Right. Oh, squeaking. It's a freshwater tsunami. It's meltwater coming uh, off uh, this, this catastrophic melting of the ice sheet. And I've traced the deep. sources of some of these meltwater. I've made two trips now Sorry. into the into the um, plateau country, British Columbia, what? looking for the source of this meltwater. Maybe. Because mm -hmm. in the conventional models the of, of this, this flood, it this okay. trip goes back to Harlan Brents. And basically what they <laughs> found is that the initial... Hush, man. Hush. Harlan Brents didn't provide a source for the <laughs> They said, the said, well, you're saying that all this evidence in the landscape is evidence of the flood, but oh, what was the source of the clean. flood? And he didn't have a source. So the critics then said, well, you don't have a source for the flood water, therefore oh. the flood didn't take place. Then as, as the research evolved, you had independent oh. evidence accru uh, 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 accumulating in western Montana by J.T. Pardee, who was with the U.S. <laughs> Geological Survey, and he was investigating evidence that the mountain valleys of western Montana had been filled up with an enormous volume of water. And this volume of water seemed to be exactly the same time as Brent's floods. He then assumed that this was a giant lake. And because what? you can see, and, and we can 
I think we have some images. I think Jamie yeah. has some images, so we'll pull them up shortly. We're on the mountainside. You see the shoreline's etched, you know, a thousand feet above the valley floor. <coughs> and what he then decided was that, based upon an old uh, a 19th century uh, interpretation by T.C. Okay. Chamberlain, that there had been an ice dam, he said, well, there must have been an ice dam left of here somewhere in the Clark Fork Valley. Yeah, it's over there. It, 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 normally, when you have a large lake, you have a catch the face and it's feeding. 